last presentation of the last uh, junior club meeting in the first semester of uh, academic year 2020-2021 by Dr. Shahira. Dr. Shahira, are you with us? Hi, hello, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Yes, um, should I share now? Yes, please. Yes, please, ma'am. Okay, the floor is yours. I mute myself, listening all ears to listen to you. Okay. Uh, can you see the... Yes, yes, we can see the full screen. Yep. All right. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and very good evening, everyone. Actually, uh, today it's just a very, this is just going to be a very casual sharing session. So I don't expect it to be just one way. I also expect you all to, you know, participate maybe in chat or maybe in voice. Um, this is something that I actually learned throughout my life that I would like to share. Also, recently I have been contacted by many, many students, not one, not two, but more than that. Um, that they feel depressed during the COVID time, okay? And they also feel very stressed out, um, especially during the MCO period, during the lockdown. And um, they, usually I just, you know, I, I try to share my students uh, what I have gone through life. And um, I'm still learning. So this is, maybe you can agree, maybe you don't agree. This is whatever that I have today is based on my opinion and also based on my readings. Uh, some can be scientific, some are not very scientific. Uh, so you do not really have to agree or take uh, whatever I say, uh, whatever I share with you today home. So just, just take whatever you feel that is going to help you. Okay. All right. Uh, so the title is uh, You Are Better Than You Believe. So it sounds like a very dramatic title. But um, it's actually, at the end of the day, I believe uh, that this is true, okay? Uh, I don't know, maybe I can see also the chat, the chat room in case you are all, uh... okay. But anyway, I would prefer for you to voice out rather than to um, type it out because I don't think I can concentrate on the chat now. Okay, um, nowadays many people are going through stress uh, usually during the COVID-19, but I would like to know for you all students, um, does COVID-19 really stress you out to the level that you become paralyzed? Or is it your studies? Or do you have any stress with relationships? Maybe somebody can tell me. Uh, Dr. Shaila, regarding the chat box, don't worry about that. I can monitor that. And then okay. one more thing, is, uh, yeah. it possible, is it possible to uh, turn on your video? I mean, your camera. Because I really look homeless at home, you know. But okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Let me just, let me just, uh, one minute. I think in, in the meantime, you, yeah, let's uh, just post something to answer Dr. Shaira's question just now. Actually, uh, uh, I want to ask people to mark their attendance by the link posted by Ms. Hazika. Uh, yeah, it will be posted soon by Ms. Hazika. Please go to the link and uh, fill the form. Thanks. Can you all see me? <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. All right. Okay, so my, um, I'll continue with my question. So, what are the 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 base the the most stressful situation you all are facing or have faced before? Maybe maybe you can you know, any any students can 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 just let me know. Is it the, the COVID situation, especially the students having to stay inside, locked up, not being able to? I mean, we receive from the international office, we receive a lot of 
complaints like this and people are getting stressed, very, very stressed up to the level that they, they went into depression. Can student answer? Yes. Uh, also, lecturer can answer, not only student, uh, Dr. Gan. <laughs> this is okay. Just ask an open talk. All right. Yeah, yeah. I think students, but yeah, I mean, yeah, this, this, this chance, okay? Yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe I can answer the actually um yes. for someone that like to do uh like to go to the lab right actually I yeah. I somehow feel I'm I don't think I'm I'm uh, reached the stage of depression yet but somehow I feel that I'm started to feel down mm. uh, because it's keep repeating right yeah, so basically yeah. um okay this is just my opinion because we go to the lab we see each other we. We meet friends yes. and then suddenly COVID. Okay, we try to adapt for six months. We try to adapt and then we can go to see our friend back. And then now we are, we are yeah. in stage again. And somehow so I can, uh, yeah. yeah, I started yeah. to feel that my yeah. motivation has changed a bit before this. Yeah, yeah your motivation starts to, to go down the drain. <laughs> Right, and um, it's, it's not just you, Akila. I, I wonder if you're staying inside or are you staying outside? I'm staying inside and I'm locked inside here. Ah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. you're staying inside. Okay, many students also they complain that they don't even they can't even get out to get the food. They can't even you know even um, you know stuff like that. And some of us that can help, maybe do bring in some food inside to 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 help them and whatnot. But other than COVID, do you have usually any problems with? studies and relationships or family or anything like that any any yes. stress that you're going through no. yes abu bakar Luckily, I don't have that. yeah yeah doctor before we don't have uh, any stress but for now especially with the international students we are really facing a lot of stress yeah yeah and uh, do you feel some sort of anxiety or panicky feeling or something like that uh, not really, but yes, almost yes. because we are we are here we are here not uh, almost some of us are not even seeing their supervisors and also we are missing our family. <laughs> we are still here in in US. Yeah, I understand that some of my students don't even know each other, <laughs> yeah. and I've been the, uh, they have been in the class for one year or oh, no for one semester, almost two semesters. So I understand. All right. Um, Many, many students, uh, Alhamdulillah, like uh, Sadatu, she, she, she doesn't have anxiety, but not. I myself have gone through anxiety a few times in my life to the level of it became disorder. And um, sometimes there was no, nothing that I was thinking about. Sometimes it was just some, some kind of rumination, right? And uh, just now, Pascal, I mean, Akila said that she is actually getting that anxiety, right? She's not the only one. Actually, many of them have already complained. So let's see, um, in my experience, like, again, you don't have to agree with everything, but this is how I see things and how I manage to manage. All right. So um, when you are facing this kind of stress, especially now when you're talking, when you're saying about COVID-19, what do you do? Do you binge eat and ruminate? Do you cry and ruminate? Do you go for a breather for a while, come back and ruminate again? What happens? Uh, hi, Islam. Um, Alaikum Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yes. uh, I would like to mention uh, one perspective uh, of uh, this COVID-19 dong. Uh, as per a uh, family, uh, the person with the family, uh, yeah. I feel uh, when I see my kids uh, being stressed, they are not able to go out, they are not able to go to school. All the time, Okay, I repeat again. Uh, I was 
students living with the family uh, in the family hostels uh, like uh, i seeing my kids not going to school uh, my kids often asking me why papa you are not going to office like my my daughter is very small uh, and she don't know what is lab and what is university she she just knows that if i go to lab she, yeah. she knows that i am going to office like this so this is stressful for kids also mm -hmm. and seeing kids in in, in stress uh, things like that uh, so it makes sometimes um, anxiety feeling anxiety in us also so yeah. uh, i think this I family that. perspective is a different thing yeah yes i understand i understand well you you are having that i'm also some having something like that my children are at home they want to eat all the time so i have to prepare food all the time but anyway that is something else but yeah do you have this rumination because usually when we when we are in some sort of stressful situation we are ruminating ruminating the same thing and same thing again right in any stress situation any problems that we are facing usually this is the case okay rumination and um okay the first thing that we need to know is this what we focus on usually grows whether it is good or whether it is bad I'm not a clinical psychologist, but again, this is from my experience, from what I sit and I was thinking, you know, how to actually, whatever I was facing before, you know, some of my friends knew even I was uh, facing some challenges at that time. Then I was thinking, you know, whatever that I'm focusing on, it grows, whether it's good or whether it's bad. Okay, so when we keep on focusing on those things, it keep on uh, growing. The best thing is to try, of course, it's easy to say not to ruminate, but we can break the rumination by, by, by uh, converting it into set of actions. Okay, set of actions. It can be any actions. For example, when we are feeling, when, it's, when we are thinking about the same thing over and over again, okay, that's it. At one point, you have to get up and do something else. But there are also other things that we can, we can um, look at. But I'm not going to really talk about the techniques so much, by the way. It's just um, for, for us to come to realization, uh, what is the thing actually and what we can actually do. All right. Okay. So remember, the first thing is what we focus on usually grows. Now, when we are talking about stress, stress is actually supposed to move us, not paralyze us. Many times we think that this is stress, you know, and when, when the stress grows, it's supposed to, you know, it, it will paralyze us. Um, in reality, it's not like that. Stress is actually, God is actually great. Huh? He's actually, he have um, created us in a perfect way. He also give us stress and stress is supposed to move and not, not paralyze again. And this is actually scientifically, um, scientifically documented. That means it was experimented, uh, empirically experimented, and also documented uh, by, for example, you can read it uh, from uh, Andrew Huberman and his team. He's a neurobiologist and at Stanford. You can also visit his um, um, lab. So it was when I was looking at this and I, I thought, oh, wow, this is really something new. Maybe it's not something new to you, but it was something that actually, you know, I had the aha moment when I was thinking, wow, it's supposed to move you, not. So it's true. What? then is uh sorry what then actually paralyzes us what paralyzes us is actually complacency when we are complex when we are feeling um when we're having complacent moments you know uh, for example um we are feeling so comfortable we just we, we will turn out to be couch potatoes most of the time even if you are having hunger hunger is a form of stress you know we're having hunger um, for us or for animals or for human, we will get up and go and get the food. So actually stress is supposed to motivate us. That is one thing. Uh, again, when it comes to complacency, this is something that I found out also. It's also very interesting. This is a pastor, Aiden Wilson Tozer. He says that complacency is the deadly enemy of spiritual progress. And the contented soul is the stagnant soul. When you're very content all the time, this is also not good actually, because you get stagnant, you don't move, you don't progress. Uh, the, this singer, uh, Brandy Car Carly, she said, privilege and complacency paralyze me with fear sometimes. But the less vulnerable we are because of privilege, the country we are born in and the security that we enjoy, the more vulnerable our souls are to apathy. 
So when you see, even when you see um, people who are more mature and they have much more wisdom, right? They also go through a lot of stress in life also and sufferings, okay? So that's one thing. Don't think that um, all the time stress is bad. You can actually, we can try to sometimes challenge our thoughts and try to look at it a different way, okay? And um, when you are having uh, some kind of anxiety moment or uh, stressful, very upset or whatever, you go and you ask for advice sometimes. And some people will tell you, actually many people will tell you, even to me, also I experienced this, do what your heart says, listen to your feelings. Have you all have this, um, experienced this? Maybe you go to someone and they tell you, do what your heart says, listen to your feelings. Anyone? Yes, I think most of the time. Most of the time, Hadika. Yeah, okay. Uh, most of the time, yes, huh? most of you, right? Yeah. Yes, doctor. We, Actually, we, we listen from our parents most of the time. Most of the time, do your heart says, listen to your feelings, right? I also, me also, my family would tell me that, and uh, my some of my good friends, some of you know people who I go to, you know, for advice, whatever, right? You consult some people that you trust and whatnot. This is actually a bad advice. It's a bad advice. Do what your heart says and listen to your feelings. For me, if you ask me, even if you listen to some psychologists, they will say that this is a bad advice. Why is that? Because the heart actually changes all the time. The heart changes all the time. The heart in, in Arab, the, it comes from the word kalp. Kalp is the general word for the heart and the root. This one I took from one site, like Wikipedia or something, I don't remember. But it actually expresses what I want to say. Kalp is the general word for heart and the root word means that something that turns around or something that changes easily. How can you listen to your heart when it actually is changing all the time? And also the feelings. Because you listen to your feelings, you react to it, right? You react to your feelings. And in Malay, we have this proverb. No wonder we have this proverb. Ikut kata hati mati, ikut rasa binasa. It means if you follow your heart, you will die. If you follow your feelings, you probably get damaged. This is a Malay proverb. So where do we go from here? The other thing is thoughts. When I say that you have rumination, you have thoughts. When you say you listen to your heart, your feelings, your thoughts. 80,000, uh, we have 80,000 thoughts per day. This is uh, scientific, 80,000 thoughts per day. And 90% of these thoughts are actually repetitive. 80% of it is negative. 80% of the time we have negative thoughts. This is done by Michigan State University. Um, not just them, a few other universities as well, and they have this consistent result, it's about 80, 90,000 thoughts per day, 90% repetitive and 80% negative. So if you have all this, how can you listen to your to your feelings, to your thoughts, how do you, I mean, how do you manage that? Have you ever thought that we usually have 80% uh, of the time that we have negative thought? We actually built to be biased to negativity most of the time, especially when we are in a negative environment or when we are facing some uh, problems in life, okay? You know, it can be like one day I'm very happy, you know, nothing happened, everything, you know, the, the sky is um, uh, clear, I'm happy, uh, everything is music to my ears. And then one day I'm having stress, I'm having a problem, everything is bad. Everything is bad. Oh, my friend doesn't like me. Oh, my, my children disrespect me. Everything, you, 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 you think everything comes at once. Have you had that before? Have anyone had experienced that before? Oh, I'm not. I'm not um, worth it. I'm not good. Suddenly everything comes at all at once when, when yes. you are having, uh, yes. It's how come, how sometimes. is that possible? Yes, it happens sometimes, right? So how is that possible? You're facing one problem and suddenly everything becomes a problem. This is because we are built towards uh, negative bias. Okay? So, so we know that we cannot actually depend on this thought our thoughts, but I will go back to that um, later. And then we have this, um, when we are having a stressful situation, 
uh, and we are ruminating about it. We are ruminating and ruminating and ruminating about it all the time. At one point, we will come to a fight or flight mode. This is uh, when you get panic, you know, when you get some sort of feeling of anxiety disorder or something like that. Everybody, everybody is um, capable of this. Eh? When you are capable of mood, you are also capable of mood disorder. It can happen to anyone, but it can also be reversed. All right. So fight or flight mode, what is that? This is actually given by God to us um, to actually face real threats, real situation. For example, when you see a lion walking towards you in a jungle, what do you do? At this time, you really need to uh, um, react. So at this time, when you're looking at this lion, right, um, you are walking to you, right? You have to react. You have to do something. And um, this is real threat, right? And when you are in a war situation, this is real threat. But in this modern civilization, for example, uh, when you open your fridge during the COVID, COVID situation, you say you cannot go out, you're very stressful. And you open your fridge, you say there's nothing, no food. And now I have to go, I can't go out to get food. And then you get panicky. Is this, let me ask you, is this a real threat? Can, can someone um, respond to this? Do you think that this is a real threat? You open your fridge, you see there's no food. Um, you can't really go out and you can't really also come in if you're outside, right? And then um, how do I manage the situation? And you, you get panicky. Your thoughts come. Every th what if I don't have food for tomorrow? What if my children cannot eat? What if, what if, what if, what if? All right. So most of the time you're thinking about what if the future, right? So is this a real threat? No, Aurangzeb say no. How about the others? Do you think this is a real threat for you? When I say real threat, as as like you know, like as comparison is what we say just now, uh, when the lion is walking to you, when we are real in a real danger situation. So most of the okay, most of the time, these are what we call the symbolic threat. It's just symbolic. Even when you are in front of an audience and you have to give a talk. And then suddenly you feel this anxiety coming because, oh, I've never given a talk before. Maybe I have given a few times a talk before. Now I feel, what if they don't like my talk? What if I actually um, just fall off the floor, Peng San? What would people think about me? What, 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 what? These are all your thoughts, right? So this is also a symbolic threat. It's not real threat. It's just your thoughts. So. Um, I, I couldn't move because somebody wanted to annotate. All right, now. Okay, so let me just move for a while. So what Socrates says that when we are actually looking too much forward or when we are thinking about what if, what if the thing never, never even happened and you know that now 80% of the time you are thinking towards negativity, it might not even be true. The unexamined life isn't worth living. When he said unexamined life is something that you actually never went through, but you're thinking about it. Even if you're thinking about, let's say, for example, oh, my supervisor don't like me. She doesn't think that I'm a good student. She doesn't think of this. She doesn't think. You don't even know if it's true. This is what you are thinking. This is unexamined life. That is what he meant. And Yapko, Yapko is a clinical psychologist. I really love listening to him from Australia. He also said that neither is the over-examined life. So even if you over, if you're overthinking, this is also not good. You can actually watch his uh, YouTube, this uh, YouTube video that I find really nice. Um, it actually helped me a lot. Now. Okay. And one thing that we really need to know is that there is really no past or no future. No past, that means we, the only thing that the, the, the one we are talking about past or future is memories or anticipation. The past is our memory, the future is our anticipation. 
what do we have then? The only thing that we have is now, right now. We don't have the past, we don't have the future. We only have now. And when we talk about now, this is when we talk about mindfulness. This is when mindfulness come in. So this is a book actually from, I just ordered this book. And what happened, I ordered it from Shopee. I was so happy that um, I got it quite cheap. It came and then it came in Bahasa Indonesia. <laughs> of course, I could understand Bahasa Indonesia, but it would be, you know, uh, lesser the headache reading it in the original language. So I reordered it. Uh, this is from Eckhart Tolle. You can also browse him. All right. What Eckhart Tolle says, you know, when, when it comes to mindfulness, this is the basis of mindfulness, not just from Eckhart Tolle. It's also in Islam, we have this concept of muraqabah. And also the Buddhist monks, you know, they have been um, uh, meditating, right? Uh, by being mindful. When, when I say meditate, it doesn't mean that you have to sit quiet and meditate for one hour. It's not like that. This is also something that you need to be conscious about. That means meditating is like when you are always conscious. The problem now is when we are not conscious, when we are listening to our feelings, thoughts, or we are listening to our heart, like I said, what we do is we react. We react immediately. This reaction is the one that is going to bring us to more stress, to more problems, and to more unnecessary drama. Okay? So what... Uh, the basis of mindfulness is that um, it, it lies on observing your thoughts and believing that you are actually not your thoughts. Your thoughts will come in, right? But we are actually higher than our thoughts. The moment that we realize that we are thinking this, oh, this is what I'm feeling, that means you already are conscious and you need to know that you are actually higher than these thoughts. So what you have to do is that you need to let it in. You need to let the thoughts come in. Whatever thoughts that come in, let it come in. Whatever feeling that let it come in, feel it without judgment and then let it go. And then let it go. And you can also sometimes challenge your thoughts. An example that I can give is that the fridge just now. You went to the fridge, there's no food. You suddenly became very panicky. You, you, don't, you can't go out. You, do, you know, without food, you don't know whether you, okay, how do you buy food? And maybe tomorrow I don't have food at all. Maybe today I only have one apple I can survive with. But, okay, these are the thoughts. Oh my God, oh my God, you know, what if, what if? So, is it, then you, you really need to actually ac acknowledge that. You don't have to even judge, but you can, you can know, oh, these are my feelings, that I'm feeling a bit, and I, I'm feeling um, anxious about the situation. But you also try to challenge it, you know, uh, am I really going to die in this situation? No, I can really, if I, both come to us, I can go and ask help from the nerve center. I can call up a friend. Or if you are, if you have certain relationship or good with your supervisor, you can also talk to her or him. And uh, there will be a way. I mean, nobody is going to let you die inside the campus. It is not a war situation. There's no lion walking towards you to eat you. This is not the situation. Right? So that's what I meant by you observe the thoughts but you know that you are higher than the thoughts. The moment that you know that you are higher your thoughts, you're no longer the thoughts and you are now conscious. So it takes practice. I know maybe some of you feel like, what she's talking about, huh? I don't understand, but it takes practice, okay? So those of you who are interested can also have further talk with me later, or you know, you can WhatsApp me or whatever. So uh, this is the lesson that I actually, for me, that I actually benefited from. When you observe and let the thoughts in without judgment, let it go, you will not react. You will not react. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that you should not take action. You know, it doesn't mean when somebody is being rude to you, 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 do, you, don't, you, you should not take action. For example, if somebody is rude to you and they are uh, using foul language and all that, the thing is, okay, your thoughts will come, your feelings will come, oh, this person is being rude to me, he or she is disrespecting me. But you can still um, res you can still respond to it, just not react in a way that your feelings, you know, whatever that you are believing in your thoughts, you know. You can just say, okay, maybe there is something that I can do with this. Maybe this person is having his or her own problem. You don't know. You don't know. Most of the time, honestly, when I'm having like uh, stress, like for example, when a friend of mine became rude to me, 
or or you know a friend that i really that i feel very close to that i appreciate you know that i trust suddenly just say something something that i never expected uh, to come out from his or her mouth usually i would be like very sad i would react to it you know but nowadays i try to train myself to maybe he or she also have the okay recently this is what happened a friend of mine was very this is somebody very very close to me and she was very suddenly she was very rude and she was she was uh, she, she was even came to the point of yelling right that i was thinking what be, normally i would just react to it i probably would would just answer her back or or maybe even worse come to worse cry you know why my friend is talking like this to me i have a lot of trust i believe her i trust her for example but then i didn't do that i just listened i said okay so now both of us are not in a good um, emotion let's go home let's calm down again that is not a threat not a real threat it was symbolic threat all right she did not come with a hammer or with something to to hit my head right so that is not not the case if that is the case then i would have to do something about it i need to use my mind as a tool but in this case it's not the case so we went home the next day she called me and she really apologized apparently she was having another problem and it has nothing to do with me but she was reacting to me like i said when you have a, everything become a problem everything is negative you know the sky suddenly becomes dark there's no more birds chipping and then um you know everything and then sometimes you become the punching bag that can also happen so she really apologized and she she wanted to see me i went to talk to her she just tell me everything that happened including the trauma that happened during her childhood and it has nothing to do with me so if i would have gone back and think you know oh i, I used to be like that you know oh is this does this person don't talk to me uh, doesn't like me what is uh, ruminate 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 that is what we say the unexamined life we are thinking ourselves but even the even you don't even know if the person is does know this you know that is one thing and we will not go anymore into an autopilot mode autopilot mode is very bad that means you are doing things without knowing it sometimes even when you pray you pray you're thinking about something else you pray you pray you rocko you sujud and you do all the things that you need all the actions that you need to take during prayer but you are not conscious about it you're thinking about something else when you, when you know when that happens sometimes you can even pray more rakaat if you have to do four you will do five you know or uh, the wrong qibla it can also happen so what happens when when all these things happen when when you're thinking when your your mind wanders you should actually bring it slowly back to the now to the now okay to be conscious the third thing is challenge your thoughts like the example i gave you just now maybe the person is having a problem maybe the person it is not really you maybe at that time what you say makes the person angry but the point is the anger comes not just because of you but because also added by something else so we need to to train ourselves it needs to be you know it needs to be seamless that is the hard part because everything takes training and um don't believe in everything you think right and at the end you will find that you will have sense of control i'm not saying i have sense of control i'm also learning about it all right i'm still learning i'm still practicing this is why i want to share um but once we have that sense of control control what else do we need right okay the next thing is to understand that happiness when i when i talk about the power of now when i talk about all this thing we i also understood that happiness is actually internal okay um i think i did not uh, <laughs> i did not type i did not copy and finish my whatever i wanted to type sorry about that what i wanted to say is that you are not at the oh, okay that is there everything you are not at the mercy of the external entity as your source of happiness once you think that your husband is your source of of happiness your wife is your source of happiness your children are your source of happiness your phd is your source of happiness that is when you will be at the mercy of the external thing at all times that means it depends on those things 
It depends on those things. You are depending on externality. Oh, I call my friend. My call, my friend did not answer me. Why she did not answer me? As, until she answer me, I will not be happy. You are depending on she or he answering you. This is what I mean by external. So it should be internal. It comes from inside. All right. And for you to feel it is by being conscious about your feelings, by being conscious about the now. Okay. <clears throat> All right, the next thing, what I understood from all this is that positivity, sorry, the, the, it's supposed to be positivity and happiness are not feelings. They're actually skills, all right? These are not, these are not um, given. These are acquired. This can be trained, and this is the basis of neuroplasticity. The moment I realized this, it helped a lot. This is actually skill. Happiness is actually a skill. It's not a feeling that you get when you're born or something like that. No, these are skills. All right. And the only constant now is change. Whatever happened, whether it is good, the stress that you're facing now, whether it is good, whether it is bad, it will not remain. It will change. You will change. In the future, it will change. So... You know, constant is, constant is equivalent to something that doesn't change, but the reality is the only constant is change. So when you know that, you feel actually better. So know that whatever you are facing now, even in the COVID situation, you're feeling like you are not going to face this for the rest of your life, inshallah. It will change, okay? <clears throat> last but not least, oh, I think this is the last uh, slide. Um, Sufferings actually is equivalent to wisdom, and wisdom is equivalent to success. You can, if you don't believe me, check out all those successful people out there. Um, do you think that they have achieved what they have achieved now by living um, a comfortable life? No, actually, they have gone through some kind of suffering. And even in Islam, we believe, like, I think there's a hadith that says that sufferings, Allah gives you suffering to make you actually better in life, for you to learn from it, and for you to actually help other people. That's why sometimes I tell my, my children especially, you can be financially wealthy and you can be emotionally bankrupt. All right, the only way for you to be emotionally wealthy is also to help other people. Um, no matter how small it is, your help is. Um, so this is what I believe in. When, when, I, when we, people talk about suffering, stress and all these things, at the end of the day, you are going to be like a sharpened blade you know, with these sufferings. And last but not least, remember, you're better than you believe and do not believe everything that you think. All right? So that's all that I have from today. Thank you very much. Um, if you have any question or if you want to discuss your experience, you may. I mean, I'll be very happy to hear it. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Dr. Shaira. Thanks. For Wa alaikum salam.